Good morning, welcome back to Projects with Everyday Dave. I've gotten a lot of questions about net metering, so today I'm gonna to answer some of those and show you how net metering works on my grid tie system. And then after that, we're gonna take a look at some of the different types of net metering, how that's gonna affect the payback for your system to help you make the right decision for your area. So let's look at the numbers. In a grid tie system with net metering, you install a meter that can see the difference between power coming into the building and power going back to the grid. It measures both of those. You can see the sun is just coming up over the horizon. And if you look at the solar panels, it's hitting the edge. And you can see from the shadow behind them that's cast, the sun is not really hitting the front of the panels yet. If we take a look at the inverter, we can see we're producing about 1600 watts. Now on the meter itself, there is a received, that's power received, and a delivered, that's power delivered. I've been watching the numbers back and forth for several minutes and they haven't changed and that's probably because the power we're producing, about 1600 watts, is pretty much exactly the same as what we're consuming. And so in this case, uh, we're just supplying the power we need, nothing, nothing goes back to the grid. The power from my solar panels comes into the inverter and then through the wall into this AC disconnect. And pretty much all systems require this AC disconnect for the safety of line workers they can be sure that the power from the solar panels is disconnected by simply flipping the switch. And then out of this box, it comes up here into this breaker panel. In this breaker panel, I have this 40 amp, 240 volt breaker, and that's where the power is fed back into my house. When the panels are producing power, it comes into this uh, disconnect box, then it goes from here up into the breaker box into this 240 volt 40 amp breaker and that back feeds the system for the house. When I'm producing more power than my house needs, it feeds back through the meter, gets measured and goes out to the utility grid to support one of the neighboring houses. When I'm drawing more power than my system is producing, then the meter measures what's coming back into the house and it's combined with the power coming from the solar panel system to feed the needs of the house. Now, later in the day, as the sun has come up much higher on the horizon and we're getting producing a lot more power, closer to 7,000 watts, we can see that we're producing a lot more power than the house needs and we're pushing power back out to the grid. Now, if we look on the computer, uh, we can look at exactly how much power is being consumed and produced and we can see that from the graph. So let's take a look at those graphs. We're gonna look at three things here really quickly. The first is, what happens when we have no net metering? We'll look at one year savings and the amount of time to pay off the system. Then we'll look at monthly net metering and yearly net metering and see how they compare. I'm gonna use actual data from my solar array to show you how this works. This page is taken directly from my utility website, which monitors my hour by hour production and consumption. This is the usage during July and you can see the bars that go down are times when I produced more than I used. The bars that go up are times that I consumed more than I used. And then this line here is the average daily temperature. So we're gonna look at July 26th as a summer day and its average temperature that day was 80 degrees and it was obviously a pretty sunny day. We consumed and produced almost exactly the same amount of power resulting in a near net zero day. So that's a good, good day for us to look at the data and understand how it works. On this page, you can see under this blue curve, the amount of power that was produced by the solar array. And it makes this nice parabolic curve because there weren't any clouds that day. The sun rose in the morning, we hit peak power, and then it drops back off. At the bottom, you can see what hour of the day it is. And then here on the left is the number of kilowatt hours produced each hour of the day and that's these points plotted out. Then under this orange curve is the amount of power consumed throughout the day. You can see in this gray area is the amount of power that was covered by the solar array. So in this case, there was 38.8 kilowatt hours of power that I used and was covered by the solar panels which equates to about $5.82 at 15 cents per kilowatt hour. Then if we look at this area in the orange, this is power that I consumed, but there was no solar panel source for it. So I had to pull that from the grid. Since I'm a grid tie system, I don't produce the power, I pull it from the grid. In this case, 26.9 kilowatt hours of that power was outside the window of my production time. 
and that equates to about four dollars worth of power. So if I was not grid tie or had some kind of battery to absorb this extra power, I would have had a 40% loss for that day, which equates to $3.74. And that's a pretty significant loss. Now, if we go to a day in April, now this is the month of April, you can see it's a little bit more evenly distributed. In fact, the month of April is almost a net zero month. But you can see the days that I consumed more than I used and the days that I produced more than I consumed are just about equivalent. Now, if we pick a day here that's near net zero, just like we did in the summer, it happens to be a pretty cold day. It's an average temperature of 35 degrees Fahrenheit. We use some heat that day and I have an all electric house. So my geothermal heat pump is what's heating the house when it gets too cold. So let's look at that day. Doing the same analysis, you can see that the area under this blue curve is what the solar panels produce. And you can see that 79% of what we produced was actually wasted. And that's because unlike in the summer, most of the power consumption is at night. So you can see these huge wings outside of the sunny time of the day when I'm using power to produce heat. And in fact, 36 kilowatt hours on that day or $5.40 worth is pulled back from the grid. And 79% of the power I produced that day, $5.24 worth, is lost if I don't have grid tie or battery system. Let's look at those two scenarios together. Now, we can't just take that 79% loss in the winter and extrapolate that across the entire year. And we can't just take this 40% loss in the summer and extrapolate that across the entire year. So in order to do this analysis, I took all the power that my system produced over the year and I added it up 13,434 kilowatt hours over that year. If I multiply that times 15 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a fairly average rate for the United States, that equates to $2,015 worth of power that I produce. Now, as we just looked, some of that would be wasted if I wasn't grid tie. So I downloaded every hour of production for every day of the year. And that's the chart you see here. It looks solid because there's so many data points. And from this chart, you can see that the amount of overproduction throughout the year maybe isn't as much as you would think. There's quite a few more hours that I underproduce than I overproduce. And the highest overproduction in any given hour was maybe six or seven kilowatt hours. If we look at just this group of data right here, we see that we would have lost 6,000 kilowatt hours of power. And if we multiply that out, we see that it's an average of 45% loss over the year, which is something in between this 79 and 40% that we looked at on these two key days. If we multiply that by our 15 cents per kilowatt hour, we end up with a loss of $912, which is pretty significant. That means we're only going to save $1,100 a year on our solar panel system as opposed to the $2,000 a year we would save if we had a net metering system. Now let's look at our overall analysis. If we had a system with no net metering and no battery, our one year savings would be only $1,100 and that would push our payoff out to 8.9 years. My system costs about $9,800, so that would be 8.9 years to pay it off. Let's look at what happens when we have monthly net meter. Here is a look at all of the power consumed and produced from a net standpoint over a year. And you can see that July, August, September are months where I consume more than I produce. October, April, May are months that were near net zero. Now my system, I designed to underproduce what my house uses because my utility is a by the month net meter. So if I overproduced in a month, I wouldn't be able to take much use of that power. So I designed it not to do that. And what we can see from this is if we take a look at April, for instance, and break that down to day by day, we saw this chart a little bit earlier. Since it's a net zero month, we have a lot of up days and a lot of down days, up being overconsumption and down being overproduction. But you can also see that oftentimes it was several days in a row. Here I overproduce for three days, just use a little bit, and then overproduce for two more days. So one, two, three, four, five days of overproduction, and then a couple days of consumption that were significantly 
higher consumption than production. If I was trying to do a battery system, I would need to be able to hold more than one day's worth of power in order to really make use of it. But in a grid tie system, I have an infinite battery. I could overproduce for the first 15 days of the month and then consume more than I produce for the next 15 days. And as long as it all averages out at the end of the month, my bill will be zero. That is the big key for net metering over a month. Looking at that data, we would be able to utilize all $2,000 of power we produced because in my case, I don't have months that produce more than I use. I only have days that produce more than I use. And so my payoff drops to 4.9 years, a substantial reduction in payoff time than if I had no grid tie at all. And that's one of the reasons it's so important to understand what the requirements are for your state and for your utility. Now one more thing we can look at is yearly net metering. There are some areas that allow you to roll over from one month to the next month your overproduction, which is fantastic. If in fact I had been able to do that, I would have made a different system. I would have made a system that would have covered all of my power. For instance, if you look at this chart, right now I don't have any overproducing months and that's by design. But if my net metering was by the year, I would have several months that produced more than I used and those would roll over into the months that I consumed more than I used and I could have an average out for the year. Now that wouldn't change my payoff time. It would still be 4.9 years to pay off my system but I could pay off a bigger system that way and my yearly savings would be higher. That's the difference between no metering, net metering by the month, and net metering by the year. One other thing that I want to show you is some websites that will help you understand what the net metering situation is in your state. One website I think would be very helpful for you is this one I have pulled up here, desireusa.org. And on this website, they have a lot of great resources. They have these very simple maps that allow you to hover over your state and see what the policies and incentives are for your area. You can click on one of those states and it will give you all of the programs related to energy efficiency, not just solar, but also wind, hydroelectric, geothermal. It will tell you what the history and requirements and laws are that pertain to that in your area. You can also go to the resources tab it has presentations, publications, detailed summary maps. There's a lot of great maps on here. One of the ones that I really like is the net metering policy map. This one shows you really quickly at a glance all of the states that have particular policies that make net metering easy or difficult and what those characteristics are. So you can use this website. There's a lot of other websites that would also be really helpful in your research. Most of all, make sure you contact your utility company because they are the ones that are gonna manage your net metering and they're the ones that are gonna know the most about what you can and can't do. I'll leave a link in the description below to how I installed the system as well as other videos on how to design your system. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you next time.